offering. And if you have your YouVersion Bible app, you can go into the events on your Bible app and you can find uh, the sermon there under the events, under the church name, and it'll have all the notes for you and have uh, the PowerPoint as well. And you can take notes. But today we're going to talk about how healing can come while we suffer. We don't have to wait until a big uh, miracle, until a big, you know, lightning bolt life change happens before we begin to experience healing in our lives and before we begin to walk in healing. Um, I want to show you a clip of someone whose story um, really helped me when I was sick. Um, I kind of came across her blog or something, and um, and this this was a, like four years ago that I found her blog and I began to read it and it began to really help me um, to see my pain and my suffering in perspective and um, to hear her words and um, I have a little bit a clip of her message that I'd like to show you and her name is Catherine Wolf. Some of us have to go through real darkness. Eventually, probably all of us in our lives go through really seasons of terrible darkness. Probably a lot of you are going through really hard things this morning. Take hold of the treasure in the darkness. The Lord is giving you hidden treasure in secret places so that you may know him differently and live differently. I think maybe this message is one of my primary treasures post-stroke. And I cherish that, I champion it, I steward it well. And my cry to all of you is to do the same in your lives. Don't waste your pain. It's a, it's a big theme of the Bible that we shouldn't waste what God is doing and how he is at work in our lives. And I think so many of us are so numbed out and like we, we got our screens and this and that and we can't even recognize like this is the story God is writing in my life. Isn't that amazing? Catherine suffered a massive brain stem stroke 10 years ago. She's my age, you guys. She's uh, 36 years old, and since that time, she's had other. She's had a, another aneurysm, and she's had broken bones, and all kinds of things happen to her, life-threatening things. But I love the way she says, "Take hold of the treasure in the darkness." And she's living in the joy of healing while she suffers well, and suffering well is one of the themes um, of her life. And they have a book and everything. And um, one of the things that she uh, tell, tells and teaches her sons is, is this, and I think I have, that's my very first slide, and this is what she tells her, her sons, that God made you to do the hard thing in the good story he's writing in your life. God made you to do the hard thing in the good story he's writing in your life. Good and hard are not mutually exclusive. You can have a good life with hard things. You can do that. God has equipped us. God has given us so much goodness. We must remember that he equips us to do the hard thing in the middle of our good lives. So how can we find healing and joy in the middle of suffering? One of the ways I want to talk about today is to be purposeful in your pain. Be purposeful in your pain just let it happen and then just, you know, lay, lay down and, and roll over and just, you know, kind of curl up in a ball and just be like, whatever, I don't know what's happening. I'm just going to, you know, find me when it's all over, okay? We can't do that. What we want to do is be very purposeful and determined in our pain. And we want to create anchors of healing for our soul, okay? We can't let ourselves get blown and tossed about by what's happening. Circumstances will always be changing. If you don't like your circumstances now, just hang on, they're going to change because that's life. Everything changes. Things happen, okay? We go through good times and we go through hard times. But what we want to do is drop our anchors deep into the person of God so that we can stand firm no matter what happens. The waves can come, the wind can blow, the sky can get dark, and guess what? We're standing firm because we're anchored. In Romans 5, 3 and through 5, it says, we can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance 
develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. We cannot develop hope unless we develop. You can go backwards through that verse. <laughs> you cannot develop the hope of salvation until your character has been strengthened. And your character cannot be strengthened until you have endurance. And you don't have endurance until you run into problems. Hebrews 6, 18 and 19 says, so God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Our anchors that we need to be dropping are and be anchored in the word. Read it constantly. Whether you're going through good times, you're going through hard times, whether you're sick, whether you're healthy, you know, uh, you need to be in God's word. You can use the audio Bible function and listen to it constantly. Get it in you because it won't, you know, it won't be able to uh, help you unless it's in you, unless you know it. Be anchored in worship. Let worship encourage you and be your weapon. When you don't have anything else to say, sing somebody else's song. Sing, just begin to sing it out. Praise is our weapon. Praise does things in the spirit that we cannot do. We sometimes we're just we're just weak, right? In, in in the physical, but you know what? I can I can open my mouth and I can praise the Lord. I can do that, and it is strong. Be anchored in fellowship. Don't withdraw from your church family, from your brothers and sisters in the Lord, but lean into them because they know what you're going through. They've been there and they can carry you. I can't tell you how many times Jenny or Tanya, uh, you know, just sent me a message and said, I'm praying for you, I'm, I'm here for you, do you need anything, you know, while I was sick, and I thought, you know what, I'm not walking alone, I, I could feel them dragging me <laughs> along, you know, come on, come on, you know, and my parents, and, you know, sometimes literally Sam would drag me, but, you know, it, we are not alone in this. You are not alone in your struggle. You are not alone in whatever it is that you are facing. And God has given you the gift of your church family to go through it with you, to carry your burdens. And be anchored in prayer. Um, God's whisper will sustain us. Keep the lines of communication open between you and God, no matter what the situation is. No matter how awful you feel, no matter how angry you get, no matter how upset you are, God is not upset that you're upset, okay? He, he does, he's not going to be hurt. He's, he's not going to turn away from you if you say, God, I'm angry. I don't understand. I hate that this is happening to me. I don't want to live like this. And, he, you know, he's going to be like, oh, how could you? I'm so offended. No, God is not offended. He's not offended. He says, I know, I understand, and I don't want you to live like this either, and he's with you, and he's holding you, and he's carrying you, and he's wiping your tears away, and he's saying, it's okay, it's okay, let it out, go ahead, it's okay. God's whisper in the dark will sustain you, yes. and if you cannot hear his whisper in the dark, you will not be able to hear it in the light. Wow. You've got to be able to know God's voice. Yes. That tells you it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I'm here. I cannot tell you how many nights I laid awake at night in pain because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't sleep. So I was just awake and, you know, in the dark. And you don't want to like turn on the lights or anything, and because uh, the house is asleep. And how many times just crying, just laying there crying. Just there's nothing else to do right? You just, you just cry, and I know some of you know what that feels like. Yes. But those times in the dark is when I felt God's presence the most. It's when I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that he knew my name, that he loved me, and that he saw me. That he saw every tear, he was counting it, and they were not in vain. Yes. His voice will sustain you, it will reassure you, it will comfort you, and it will heal you. It will begin the healing 
in your heart that you need. It will begin the healing in your body that you need. Be anchored. So one of the, the second ways that I want to talk about is to be obedient in the waiting. Be obedient in the waiting. Stay steadfast, my soul. We sang that chorus today. We do not want to waste our pain by being the same person that we were before. If you come out the same person that you were, not taking care of yourself, not you know taking care of God uh, and your relationship with Him, if, if we are not doing what He is asking us to do, if we're reading His Word but not doing His Word, then, then we are wasting our pain God is still asking us to be the person that he has called us to be regardless of our circumstance. He didn't say, when things get better, could you serve me? When things uh, turn around for you, could you start going back to church and be the person that I told you to be in the beginning? He's not, he's not waiting on that. He's asking you to be that person right now. Yeah. Don't let your suffering stop your healing. A lot of times we let our suffering stop what God wants to do. We don't show up. Last week, um, I had an awful sinus uh, thing, you know, going around, whatever, and uh, I, I was home, like, all weekend, and then I got up for church on Sunday, and, and, and my dad was posting, you know, healing service, and we're going to have healing, unlocking your healing, and, and I start getting ready, and Sam says, oh, you're coming? Are you coming? And I'm like, well, i got to go to the healing service. <laughs> can't go to the healing service because I'm sick. I cannot go to the place of healing because I don't feel well, because I don't feel like it, because I'm depressed, because I'm hurting, because I'm offended, because I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, and I can't go to the place of healing. Come on. Get up. Get up and go to the place of healing. Go where healing is. How can you be healed if you don't go? Okay, I'm going to move on. Here's some ways to help us be obedient in our suffering, be obedient in the waiting. We need to look up and we need to look out. A lot of times with suffering, we, we're so busy looking inwardly. And this is going on and me, me, me. And who's going to help me? And it's my turn. And how about me? How about me? How about you help somebody out? How about you go and pray for somebody else? Yeah, you might not be feeling well. Yeah, your back might be hurting. But go and pray for somebody else. Go and do for somebody else. Go and, and you know, volunteer at the, at the shoe drive. Debbie, um, our sister, Debbie, uh, she's usually there. <laughs> Empty chair. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she ha had back pain all her life and, or from an injury. And, so you know, she volunteered for our shoe drive to do free haircuts for the kids. And, and she didn't know if she was going to be able to do, like, a couple of haircuts or, or what because of her back pain. And that day she did, like, I don't know, 15 or something. I mean, she just was going all day long. She was standing and going. And then she said, my back doesn't hurt. My back doesn't hurt. And her back still doesn't hurt. Right? That was years ago. When we move out of ourselves, our, what's, happening, what's happening here with us is not all that's happening. There's so much more that God wants to do. There's so much more that God wants to open our eyes to see that he is a big picture, that he has a plan, and we need to be a part of that. We need to keep moving forward. We need to keep moving deeper. Don't shelve your discipleship until later, okay? That's another one of those, how are you going to grow deeper unless you show up, unless you dig into God's word? Don't say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, get into that um, school of ministry later when things are better, later when I find the time, later when I whatever. Don't shelve your discipleship because through, the, through those things, by growing deeper into the word and growing deeper into the person of God, you're going to find that healing. That healing will come. Amen. Follow your calling. Don't let suffering stop you from being all that God has called you to be. You know, when I look at Catherine sitting there in her wheelchair and, you know, she, she lost the, the healing on the side of her face and in her hand, she had to relearn a lot of things, and you know, and and as I see her there, she has started a, a camp for people with disabilities, a summer camp, because people with dis she suddenly realized her eyes were open to people with disabilities within the church or within you know other other places that they don't really get um, opportunities, and so they started a Hope Heals camp 
a summer camp for kids and families and people, you know, with disabilities. And, and she's living out her calling in a wheelchair. You know, and to me, that, that, to me, I'm like, Sam, I feel like she's doing more in her suffering than I'm doing in my healing, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, I know it's God's time, and I don't want to be harsh to myself, but I, I, want to, I don't want to waste my healing either. And we don't want to waste our pain. We don't want to waste our suffering. We want to be who God has called us to be right now. No excuses. Start moving forward. Sometimes we think that God has called us to be a perfect version, right? That God called me uh, the perfect me, right? The future me is going to be that person that God wants me, that God wants, you know? But that's not what he did. He sees us. He sees you right where you are, just as you are, the struggles that you have, the, the disabilities that you have, maybe in your mind, in your heart, maybe in, you know, anxiety or, or mental disabilities that we all have, right? We all carry some type of disability. And he says, I call you now. I call you now. We need to remember something, that you were not called according to your weakness, but you were called according to his strength. I'm going to say that again. You were not called according to your weakness, but you were called according to his strength. Your weakness does not determine what you can do for Christ. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My grace is always more than enough for you, and my power finds its full expression through your weakness. Paul says, So I will celebrate my weakness. For when I am weak, I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. Move forward in your weakness. Move forward, and he will have the opportunity to show you his strength. The third way that we can have healing through our suffering is to be passionate in our praise. Our bodies should be used to glorify God in pain and in praise. The same hands that we lift up to receive healing should offer a sacrifice of praise in the waiting. My praise is full of answered prayers. I have a lot of joy because I know that God knows my name. I know that he heard me, and I know that he answered me. He answered us with Eliana. That's what her name means. My God has answered me because we never want to forget that he hears us. He hears everything. Prayer. Every single prayer. Psalm 69, verses 29 through 33 says, I am suffering and in pain. Rescue me, O God, by your saving power. Then I will praise God's name with singing, and I will honor him with thanksgiving. For this will please the Lord more than sacrificing cattle, more than presenting a bull with its horns and hooves. The humble will see their God at work and be glad. Let all who seek God's help be encouraged, for the Lord hears the cries of the needy. He does not despise his imprisoned people. Sometimes it's really difficult to think about praising God. When you are in grief, when you are in pain, when you feel alone, when you are depressed, when you are overwhelmed. But God is asking for our sacrifice of praise. He is asking us to give what we can. At one point, my sacrifice of praise was just standing up during worship. Because it was so painful to just stand up during the entire thing. Sometimes I didn't make it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm still here, Lord. <laughs> you know? Sometimes that was my sacrifice. That was my praise. That was my passionate praise, was being able to lift my hands. Walking was painful. There was, no, there was no dancing for me a few years ago. But today, I can bring an offering of my whole self. Yes. See, if you're, if you're not part of Faith Assembly, maybe you came in and you see me over here, and I'm super excited. I'm not a super excited person. <laughs> I was telling Sam, uh, Sunday mornings is like the most excitement I get ever. I don't dance besides in our kitchen with the kids, you know. I mean, I don't shout. I'm not shouting. I don't shout on the TV. I don't go to concerts or sports or anything. I don't do anything exciting in my life. Sundays is the most 
excited. I'm the most extroverted person today. You see me in the grocery store tomorrow, I will hide from you because I don't know why, I just do. I'm afraid. <laughs> I, I don't know why, it's like instinct. Uh, you know, I duck and I, I run. You know, so you might come in and think, oh, she's, she's so bubbly, she's so, she's one of those excited people, right? I'm one of those healed people, okay? I, I'm, yeah. See, today, my, my praise today reflects his strength in my body. Hallelujah. That's his strength that is keeping, that's, yes. that's flowing inside of me. See, my blood doesn't flow with arthritis anymore. Yeah. But it flows with strength and healing. So I can move and I can't jump and so I will. Because I can because I can offer a greater sacrifice of praise to my God who answered me. His healing steadies every beat of my heart. It beats in rhythm now. It doesn't go crazy. It doesn't go all, you know somewhere on its own. But his strength is keeping it steady every beat, every day for two and a half years. Every day, every day. It's his strength that enables my muscles and my joints to move. It is his breath in my lungs, and so I must praise. I must be passionate in prayer and praise. But you know what? And some of you might be thinking, oh, that's great for you because you've got the answer, right? Good for you. I'm still waiting. But you know what? Today, my praise is also prophetic because I'm waiting for healing for my son. I'm waiting, and I know that he will also answer that prayer. Yeah. And so I praise him because I know that the answer is on its way. Yeah. See, my joy is prophetic. Yeah. And we can begin to speak to things that are not as though they were. And we can say, he will answer me. This will change. I will be healed. My son will be healed. And he will not have epilepsy. He will not. In Jesus' name. And I sing and I praise today because even if he doesn't do anything else for me or my family, he is still worthy. Yes. He is still worthy. He is still God. Yes. He is still faithful. Yes. He is still good. He yes. is still provider. He is still yes. the creator of the universe. He is almighty God. And he is worthy of our praise no matter what. No matter what. He sustains me at all times. Yes. There isn't anything I can do to keep, to, to get myself to even take the next breath. I can't force my body to do anything. He is sustaining each one of us right now. And that same power that sustains us, that created us, that raised Jesus from the dead, Hallelujah. will resurrect our lives as well. Amen. Amen. In sickness and health, I will praise. God is worthy of passionate praise, no matter what. And why is praise so important? Why do we do that? We, we praise a lot. We, we sing a lot. If somebody's going through a hard time, we always encourage them, put on that worship music. Put on that praise music. Get that, get that going in your house, 24-7. However way you can do it, you know. Have your phone on or your TV or something. Get that music going in your house, in your car. Don't step away from it. Why is that important? Because praise brings in the presence, right? And healing is found in his presence. So I have to praise so that his presence will come and be here in my life, in my heart. And then his presence ushers in that healing that I need. I find healing in praise. It's not just about, oh, I'm just going to give this. This is all a sacrifice. This is all a sacrifice. But he says, you're going to find your healing here. You're finding your healing here in praise. Get in his presence, whatever it takes. Do what you have to do to get in his presence. Show up on Sunday. Show up on Wednesday. Show up in the prayer room at 1030. Get on that call prayer line at 7 o'clock on Tuesdays. Do what you have to do to get into God's presence. I'm going to close with this, and I'm going to ask the praise team to come up. We need to remember that the enemy wants to use our suffering to produce death, not just physical death, but spiritual death. He wants you to stay home. He wants you to stop reading your Bible. He wants you to get away from God. He, he doesn't want you to know God's voice. He doesn't want you to hear that anymore. He wants you to feel like God doesn't hear you. That's his goal. 
okay, is your spiritual death. But God wants to use our suffering to produce abundant life. In John 10, 9 and 10, it says, Jesus is saying, I am the gateway. To enter through me is to experience life, freedom, and satisfaction. A thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. Until, until you look like me up there. Okay? Until, you're, until you're doing that too. Until you're overflowing with joy and healing. See, God wants us to live in healing. Not just have a one-time experience or an as-needed. Okay? Oh, I need to take my healing pill. Oh, I guess it's time I get back into God's word because I need him now. He wants us to live in healing. Living a whole life that is healed. That's what he's offering us today. Through suffering or joy, he has more than just a miracle for you. He has a whole life waiting for you. Amen. Would you stand with me? Here's what I want to do. If you're going through something today, I want you to just to lift your hands. Lift that sacrifice up. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would help us to find purpose in our pain. That we would not waste it, God. But that we would be obedient to you calling that you have in our lives. Father, give us passion to praise you. Give us passion for your presence, Lord, because we know that our healing will be found in the middle of our suffering. 